Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. We are here with two of the greats. We got Pearls of Wisdom. How you doing, Perlo? I'm doing fantastic, my friend. Yeah, Jason. man. And we got the Professor Joe rocking the awesome t-shirt. How you doing, bro? Doing well, doing well. Ready to get into Game 7 tour. Yeah, man. That's what we're here about tonight. We're talking about Game 7. We're talking about the Flyers and the Islanders. How you all doing? Yeah, man. We got to get into this, man, because there's a lot of great stuff to talk about. The first thing I'm going to ask you guys is this. First question for the professor. Oscar Lindblom played over 17 minutes. Let me see. What do you think? He played well. He had two, a couple shots, a couple blocks, a couple good defense plays. He also hit a couple people along the boards, which you – don't necessarily expect from someone coming back in their first game per se to do it more than two or three times. And he was kind of yeah. coming in on the four check every time the one play, when he cleared it in, he went down and he, you could tell he was going to hit the person with intent to hit the guy along yes. the boards after he cleared it. So, uh, he played with a high intensity for his first game back. You could tell, you could tell at the beginning it was his first game back, but then as it like progressed past him being on the ice for four minutes, it seemed like all of a sudden he got his like mojo back and was like, okay, yeah, yeah I remember this now. Yeah, and yeah. then everything <laughs> just kind of like exactly. went from there and he played perfectly fine. That's why obviously AV said, I didn't want to play him over 17 minutes, but when you have double overtime, uh, that's why. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. No, I would so, see it's going to be interesting to see if that heightens his time tonight because he was already able to show he was good in that span of time. The thing is, you probably still would like to limit him below 17 minutes, I would think, because it's only his second game back and you have a quick turnaround for the yeah. next series. So, yeah, like, if you game. win tonight, your next game's Monday. It's probably going to be Monday, yeah. So, you're not having, you're having one day's rest and you have to go to Edmonton. Yeah, so we have true. to remember there is, there is yeah, travel because yeah. after point. this, great, the great Toronto point. bubble is done and everyone's in Edmonton. Yep, yep. Great point. Didn't we're, Dude, we weren't even thinking about that. Perlo, lay some wisdom on me, man. What do you think about the Oscar Lindblom coming back? Well, I uh, playing 17 minutes, I, never, <laughs> I, I do capping. I, I couldn't over that. Like, I would have thought if – if somebody said over 15 minutes, I'd be like, I'm not giving you anything on that. There's no way that's going to happen. Agreed. And, uh, that, yeah. that, that's amazing. It's an amazing yeah. story. And uh, as you know, I'm huge on energy. I'm a huge energy guy when I'm doing picks and stuff like that. And uh, you just can't get better energy than that. And there's some things you can't quantify with statistics and all of that stuff like that. And that game seemed to just like nothing was going to happen that was going to go against the Philadelphia Flyers. Uh, they looked like a very, they, uh, I don't know, they're outplayed a lot, but they just seemed to be able to find, like you uh, said, just find a way, find a way, find a way. And, um, I, I think it was a it was a smart move. Consider obvious. I don't. I'd like to know what the doctor's thing on that ball was, but obviously the doctor said he was okay. So it was yeah. a smart move yeah. to have that yeah. emotional energy in the yeah. series that's been very back and forth to get. And both teams should be pretty darn tired at this time. So yeah. having that extra emotional energy boost was uh, amazing. Now, how is he gonna? I sure he doesn't want to go. Very over fresh legs too. Yeah. He doesn't want to well, go over I, 10 minutes. I agree with exactly with both of you, with both of what you guys said. Um, but I also agree with this too. AV has followed the same um, MO throughout the entire season where guys come back and they do the, the morning skate and then they do the warm up skate twice before they actually come in and play. So every player that's come back from injury so far has done that routine. Um, Oscar Lindblom included in that in that group, right? He did two morning skates, and then he did two warm up skates, and then he sat both games, and then the the third one he came in and played, right? They also said way back in the bubble started, or right when he rung the bell, or whatever it was, said that he would be able to play for us in September. Well, last time I checked in the calendar, we in September. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. Lindblom is out on the ice. I was utterly completely overly impressed with how well he played with the amount of time that he played with coming back. Yes, Look, we, 
Exactly. With all when we saw him come back and play when when they opened up the phase two and he came in and did that 35, 45 minute skate, that was even before he rung the bell. Yeah. Okay. So the kid was in sick shape then. Mm-hmm. To come out and play that amount of time and have those kind of stats that Joe mentioned with the block shots and the being able to be responsible, play the 200-foot game like A.V. wants. I mean, the, the kid was phenomenal before he left, and I think he's just going to pick right up, and it's just going to be awesome. Okay? It'd be awesome when he gets his first goal. Oh, yeah. man. Could you imagine if we were playing in Philadelphia, which is where we would be playing tonight? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's the thing. Uh, yeah. yeah. Was, uh, I'd like to say it would be amazing story for him to get like the goal in OT or something like that. Except I don't want my heart to have to go through an OT. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, right. Yeah. Five for one, please. Can we just win oh, okay. five? All right. All right. Where's the defibrillator? So I'm he not could have pull, to the dangling the TV. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe maybe Oscar will just pull a uh, um, whatever that kid's name was that went off uh, yesterday out of nowhere. Uh, Kivaranta from oh, Dallas, Veronica, yeah. And oh, yeah, 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 for yeah. Patrick uh, in his second game. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna make this point about what we're talking about here because we were talking about this off camera, and and this is what I wanted to get into a little bit with this, especially with this game. This is game what for us tonight? Game seven. 16, or seven, right. yeah, game seven. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Game seven tonight. We played six games against Montreal, three games in the round robin. So that mm-hmm. this is game 16 for us. Right. Right? If you look at the regular season, right, you look at guys like JVR and Lawton and G and Hayes and most of all the big guns don't really start getting rolling until the second or third week of the season, which puts us about to the number of games that we're at right now. Mm-hmm. Do you know, like, when you take those old-fashioned matches that light on every surface and you do it real slow on the box, and eventually, if you keep going, it'll light. That's what I think's going on right now with the Flyers. I have that feeling that that match has just been lit with this game six and we're going in to game seven on fire with that fire in our belly. Look, I was overly impressed with JVR. I was overly impressed with Lawton, overly impressed with Hayes, how well we played. I was overly impressed with our defense and exactly with what Perlow said. Everything that the Islanders threw at us, we sagged back. We held on, we took care of business, and we came back swinging. Mm. That's, yeah. that's kind of what, yeah, that's kind of what I think. And the other thing is, too, with energy, we got two energy boosts in that game because you had Oscar come back, then you had Raffle come back in the same thank game. You, thank you, thank you. So <laughs> that, that really helped your energy. And Raffle's the one guy, as he scored last game, that'll always go to the front of the net and get in the dirty areas of the goal. Place. Yeah. yeah, so man. that's why it's key to have him back because he leads by example in that aspect. And then other players are like, oh, maybe I should start doing that more. It's like, yeah, we should have done that two weeks ago, but I'll take it. Uh, but uh, so it's it's nice how uh, everyone's kind of falling into their place now. JVR seems to be getting his legs back under him. So did he just seem like a different player to you guys in he the last like, games? Yeah, he looks. He looks like right. he's starting to get his confidence back a bit. I think it must be a confidence issue. Maybe it's been a, like, maybe JV's just been having, like, a crazy long injury thing that wouldn't go away, and it start. I don't know. It's something, he, you know, well, like, when he, sense. I remember when he played in Toronto. Yeah. He, uh, I mean, he was a bull going to the net in yeah. Toronto. Like, he yeah. was a bull. And maybe he's had uh, a lingering, ongoing injury that just has him wincing to go to front of the net as much as he'd like to. I don't know. See, I think there's a couple things going on there. I think one of the points that we made in a couple of our shows back that Joe or or Perlo said about how if you get guys in front of Arlamov, he's not the guy that's going to be looking around players and guys. 
And if you look at most of where our goals have been scored, have been our all scored in, in those particular areas of Varlamov, on the mm. outside above the shoulder, places where he's not going to be looking to, to look around other players. You know what I'm saying? Like especially the goal uh, that Hayes scored, the very first goal, was right up over here. Right, and almost all the goals that we have scored up over on in that direction have all been very successful for us. You know what I mean? Because of exactly the points that you guys, one of you, I can't remember who it was. So I'm sorry, <laughs> but one of you guys made that point that said, you know, Varlamov is not the guy that's 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 going to be looking around. And I think that's been the huge key as to why we've been able to be completely and utterly outshot, completely and utterly outshot disgustingly outshot and still be able to have more goals than them yeah. because of doing those exact things that you talked about. Well, post game was trying to so hard to not say that for was abysmal. As soon as post game came on, they were trying so hard to use a different word other than he was just trash. <laughs> like, like well, they literally, they literally I, almost said as the start of the post game, for was trash uh, because I mean, yeah, you might be tired, but no offense, you should be able to stop more shots on 20-some shots. A lot of those were not. The one, yeah, you can't stop that. A couple of those, other goalies would have stopped it. Um, so I don't think I kind of – I don't think he's starting tonight. Let's put it that way. You uh, think Grace is going to start? He seems exhausted. He seems yeah, Grace, like Grace will likely confidence. start. Uh, wow. I don't think Varlamov's going to start tonight. He doesn't seem like he's uh, 100%. Okay. Uh, wow. Like, okay. I think what you were talking about was I was talking about the fact that Varlamov has been has is not known for his stamina, and when he starts getting tired, he starts dropping yeah. to his knees a lot. Yeah, we talked about that. And um, so if you get in front of him, he leaves the corners open because he's down on his knees, right? So if you can pick the corners when you got a few people in front of him, he's almost always going to go down. So you just got to shoot high and try to find your spots that way. And that's really what they've been doing. And now I'm actually surprised that um, that Barry Trotz has not been going to Grice more with this knowledge. Like, it's not like it's unknown. Yeah. Barlamov yeah. was always having that problem in Colorado. And but he's played well against Philly. Yeah, but it's just he's played a lot, and at the end of the he's season, well. at the end of the season, he he was tired again. He, that's yeah, the reason why they were earlier. Losing. Sorry, yeah. I said you talked about this earlier. Yeah, about him being tired. Yeah, he's Barlona yeah. gets yeah. tired earlier than a lot of goaltenders, and uh, that's really what's happened. Uh, I I I think if if you would switch goaltenders, the Islanders would definitely have beat us by now. You think if if uh, if Grace was in the whole time? No, no, no. If Carter Hart was in playing for the Islanders and Varlamov was playing for us, we would have been done a long time ago. Oh, yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. So let's face it. Carter wow. Hart is the reason why we're here. Like, let's not try to pretend it's anything Wow, else. you know what? That is a super awesome point, man, because yeah. you're right. If it would not have been for Carter Hart, Make it to some of the saves that he made, and the, what he made a, was a record 49 saves, right? Yeah. That was a record for him, right? Some yeah, of the yeah, saves for him, he made yeah. towards the end there, those last couple of like those last say seven or eight saves that he made were, I, but I, I just can't help but be amazed by this kid. It's like it's highlight real save after highlight real save after highlight real save, like yeah. just. The stupid little derpy plays where he just reaches out with his glove and whoop, there's no more puck now. It's in his glove. Yeah. I mean, come on. That's yeah. that to me is just amazing. I love seeing that and I love seeing that he's thriving. He's one of the more patient goalies I've ever seen with his Absolutely. glove. Absolutely. Like oh, I like most point. goalies, even like bro doors of the world, I never seen them wait like and then the guy shoots like 10 seconds later and somehow you still make the glove save. Like I've never seen a goalie be able to wait that long. And effortless, yeah. effortless. Yeah. The only yeah, one that I've seen, so easy. the only goaltender I can think of off the top of my mind, but if I thought more about it, maybe somebody would come up, would be Patrick Waugh. Patrick Waugh made it look easy. And Carter Hart makes it look easy. He stops a lot of shots where you go, okay, Carter Hart, Hart stopped the shot. 
But if it was another goaltender, it would have been like, wow, what an amazing save. Because you, he's always in the perfect position. Yeah. He's yeah. just, he's great. I think one of the best things has been they've been trying to, that's what they've been trying to do is his glove hand. Okay. And he's been taking a lot of shots in that direction. And and the last game, I think it was like in the first period, where he took a shot, like either it was right off of his, right here, or like right off of his elbow or something, you know, and, and he just kind oh, of shrugged yeah. it off. You know, and he just kind of shrugged it off. I personally feel that no matter what anybody says, that you have to give the MVP to Carter Hart. Oh, absolutely. Hands down. No, no doubt about it. No doubt I've about been, it. I've been overly impressed with what the team has done with the exact same lineup. It's freaking ridiculously scary Yeah, that some of the same people are still in and we're able to like, how did we win that game? Wait a minute. Huh? Yeah. We did what? And the same guys are in. I don't uh, get it comes this. Right you down to it, me, AP, you're Hart. killing me. When it comes right down to it without Carter, with, you could change any goaltender experience. Apart from maybe Demko, yeah, but Demko only did it for two games. But I, you could switch any goaltender, I think, and and uh, I don't think we would have been there right now. And that includes Laner. I don't think Laner was playing as well as playoffs. Yeah. He's played really well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Demko might be the only one, and even yesterday he still did good. They were just getting shellacked, and it was kind of yeah, it was kind of bound to. Happened. Wow. Logic so. actually came out in the end. Yeah. So was, <laughs> what? Did you just say logic came out in the end? Yeah. yeah. Well, uh, actually wait, huh? Yeah. Good. I'm pretty sure if they won on 14 shots to almost 40, that would have been ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. That, that, see, that was kind of like what we did. I mean, I, I can't believe we're that we were that outshot. Yeah. But. In some respects, that says something about the fact that they took that many shots and Carter Hart was able to stand in there. That also says something about our lack of defense. Yeah. Because that means that's pretty much hanging the goalie out to dry. Well, what's his name? The problem with our defense is our second defensive line in uh, Myers and Sandheim haven't been as on fire this series where they were better in the first series. And now, well, most of the time. Now, uh, Provi and Niskanen, because Niskanen, some shift still looks a little off, uh, have been our better defensive line this series where kind of reverse yeah. role. But last yeah. game, Myers looked uh, a little bit better on the ice. Sanheim keeps like doing what Provi was doing last series where he kind of keeps looking like he's second guessing himself before he makes a play. And then yeah. that effect where Myers isn't just doing let that. it happen. Yeah, so that's why I think this will probably be the night he has his best game. Because game seven, you have a lot of energy, but sometimes you also go, well, I'm putting it all on the line. We're in a game seven. I'm going all out here. Like, like normally yeah. that's the mentality of a game yeah. seven, whatever happens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we're, we're, like, obviously you have more series after this, but when you're in a game seven, your mentality is win now, we're getting through this game seven. So. I agree with what Perlo said, too, as well. I think you made a great point by saying there was no way that having Lindblom in now is going to affect us to the point where we're going to be giving this game away. And and I think that this was the first game that we've seen where the Islanders earned all but one of, no, all but two of their goals. In my opinion, I believe they were given two goals. Okay? Because... The challenge should have never happened because the first goal should have never been allowed. That is just my opinion. That's my two cents. It it just looked like he slid into Carter Hart and prevented Carter Hart from making the save. So the fact that the puck was able to go in past Carter Hart after that happened, that, that to me just blew me away. I was, well, the, prob- I was- the problem is by league rule, if someone makes any contact with you, that could be deemed that's the reason you went into the goalie. They're probably going to call it a good goal. Where Braun did kind of trip him. He did trip him. There's no so, doubt about that. Uh, that I, that's also why A.V. even said in his press conference, he owned it and said, I saw another look yeah. as we were reviewing it, and I wouldn't have reviewed it. You guys beat me to the punch. If I saw it. <laughs> 
Um, so I think, uh, I think that was a bad challenge, but he owned it. And, uh, that I right. said that door in the game and that almost but cost that's him. two goals that they didn't earn. Uh, well, I don't think the first one was goalie interference. I don't agree with that. Okay. Well, so one goal they didn't earn. Yeah. Cause the yeah. first one by league rule would not be goalie interference. Like they would have okay. had to. Like, they would have had to, like, go against what they normally use. Now, granted, they have done that about three separate times in this play for different teams, but they okay. would have to go against how they normally rule. On yeah, stuff. yeah. It has, ha- yeah, it has yeah, happened I'm going. multiple times already with some of these calls uh, in the playoffs, but uh, it's not mm-hmm. – usually it doesn't happen. <laughs> you know, and I'm not trying to open up a can of worms or anything like that. You know what I mean? I'm just saying that that was, that was a goal that was basically uh, uh, here you go. They, they didn't really earn that goal. It was kind of a, a power play goal that you knew was coming. You could feel it. it. It was it was a coach mistake that he did own, and so we get it. You know what I mean? But if that goal didn't happen, then we don't go to overtime, and, and we're already, you know, we're already talking about game seven in a much different light. You know what I mean? That's all I'm saying. But I really agree with what you guys said, and I think, um, Professor, you made some great points, too, about, the way Carter Hart's been playing and also about how the rest of the team has been playing. And I, and I really, really feel that believe it or not, we're going to probably have the same lineup tonight. So Unless I- if Joel, cause I feel like he was injured. Uh, if some guys are able to play, then you might have a tad different lineup to try to go full bore at them with the most <clears throat> skill possibly could throw at them. Okay, so that's the next question then. What? If we if, if Farabee can come in, right? Who do you who do you drop? I would have to guess it has to be a Grant or a Thompson, but A V's obsessed with Thompson, so I would say Grant. <laughs> okay. Perla, what do you think? Uh, <laughs> what do you think? If if Farabee can come in and play, who do you think drops? Uh yeah, same thing. I mean, I think if uh, anybody went into play Thompson or <laughs> right. Thompson. So, we, yeah. so we also okay. know that Katuria so, is not going to be available for tonight. Katuria is not going to be available. Oh, is he not that already? I don't know. No, no, no. I don't know. I'm asking. Is Katuria com- confirmed not available for tonight? Uh, no, no. Heard, you don't. Oh, yeah. You'll never hear any of that now until that's what makes it hard for capping now because you don't know until they pretty yeah. much. Till they're singing the national anthems, what's going on? Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's why it's really tough. Like even with the Flyers nitty, with having the connection, you don't know. Nobody knows. Nobody, nobody that's close knows. So like they can't tell you anything anyway because they don't know. And I, because <laughs> because I'm I'm in I'm out of town, uh, I'm a little bit um, disconnected. So that's why I wasn't quite sure with what uh, the no. But it, it is weird. Yeah, it is. It is a uh, weird, but it's a good strategy by coaches how they do it this year because they. They said uh, with um, – They would start, change strategy. Yeah, like with waiting to announce your starting quarterback as a football team. This is the one year you can get away with that because nobody's there. Nobody's seeing stuff. Who's getting more reps? Who's doing that? So this is the one year you can get yeah. away with two Perfect. seconds before the game. Yeah. Hey, he's playing. And it's like, oh, my God, oh, my God, oh, my God, oh, my God. And the other team doesn't know. Quick run. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So – Awesome sauce, man. I think I think we brought up a great point. Um, do we want to do a prediction? Oh, I guess. All right, Perlo, give me some wisdom, brother. Well, I put some fun pearls out there on the Patreon, our on our Patreon, B, B and I's Patreon for uh, BPOW. and I just said fun pearls because I'm putting Philadelphia with you know like a couple pennies. But my heart is like all Philadelphia, so I don't like to make bets when my heart is this much into wanting a team to win because my head probably will try to convince me in every way possible <laughs> that Philadelphia is going to win. So yeah. I'm taking Philadelphia. I don't even care about betting or logic or anything. I just want Philly to freaking win. All right. That's, that's Professor it. Joe, come you on, baby. You have to remember – Carter Hart's been, like we said, our best player. You want to know where Carter Hart's from? Very close to where Pirlo's sitting right now. Yeah. Uh, Edmonton, yeah. Alberta. So yeah. if you don't think he's going to play to try to get over to his hometown to try to win the conference finals in the Stanley Cup as hard as he has every other game in the Island. Yeah. yeah. 
So <laughs> I think this game has a chance how Thatcher Demko, Thatcher Demko, Thatcher Demko was the three stars of the one game. Yeah. If the, it, it, this game has a chance if we win similarly to have it be Carter Hart, Carter Hart, and then maybe one other person that scores like two goals. And then it'll be like, yeah, the other two stars are Carter Hart. And then it'll be like, say, JBR scores two goals. Then it'll be like James Van Riems yeah, Like right. It would yeah, just yeah, be yeah, whoever else. To, yeah. yeah, no, that's a great point. Uh, look, we are on the precipice. Mm-hmm. This is the penultimate right here. This is what all the chips are for. This is what all the blood, sweat, and tears are for right here. This is why we play the game. This is why we chase the chalice. Okay? This game literally, right here. Literally, uh. For uh, AV after games, winning martini. <laughs> winning martinis. Yeah. I don't care, man. I'll tell you what. I would buy, for, I'd buy a round of martini. And I don't buy alcohol for nobody, but I'd buy him a round of martinis if he could do this tonight. Yeah, for sure. Philly, I, Philly to I, the I Western Finals, yo. Western freaking Finals. I know. I see the Flyers winning tonight, so but exciting. I think this is going to be a tough game. This is going to be a tough game. Oh, okay. for sure. And yeah. we might see extra time. Yeah, yeah I hope not, but we might, yeah. I hope not as well. <laughs> Honestly, I hope we come out and dominate. I hope we come out in the first period and put two two goals on the board, come out in the second period and dominate that period and put a goal on the board, and then in the third period, I want to see us dominate again and put another goal on the board. So what you're saying is you don't want to go up 3 nothing. Then win four to three in overtime, <laughs> like yeah. some of these other games. <laughs> okay, that's what my heart is telling us. You know, we want to see like five to nothing with like six minutes left in the third, and everything be cool, even if they score three goals. You know yeah. what I mean? <laughs> because yeah. we all know that that score for them and us throughout the year has been threes. That three is that match, and it's been that way throughout the series because it's been four to three, five to three, whatever, 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 right? If you just removed the third period, we would have won the series already. (laughs) Third, see? There's that three again. See? Uh, So, I like the Flyers in this game. I like seeing us matching up with Tampa Bay. I, I like seeing the fact that we have, it seems like that match is being lit. It seems like. It's going to that be fire because Tampa hasn't played in about a week uh, and the Flyers are going to be playing, but they're going to be a little gassed because your first game is on Monday. If uh, if you're if we're able to get past this one, as we all think they will, so so that's so a what? wouldn't you much rather be jumping right in without missing a step instead of sitting back for five days? Well, or I would say days? the first 10 to 15 minutes of the game. We'll dictate You're probably them. going to get outplayed a little bit because a team's just going to be faster than you when they haven't played. And they might not be as skilled as you because they also haven't played in a week. Like you might be able to make this nicer passes and all that, even though it is Tampa, because yeah. you played two days ago. But yeah. the the issue there is they're they're a very fast team. They haven't played in a week, so yeah. they're probably going to come out like a bunch of Usain Bolt on skates. Yeah, uh, yeah. So. <laughs> That, well, I think Tampa has a huge advantage getting the rest too. Yeah. This is a different thing. I, I look, really... I, I'm, yeah, and I, I'm look. I'm with you guys. I think the first ten minutes of this game is going to dictate how things are going to go, because I think we're going to get. They're going to throw the kitchen sink at us, and we should be throwing the kitchen sink at them. Mm-hmm. It's going to be interesting. I, I want to see if that. If I had any bet please on this, AP, please. Movie, I'm, under... I'm asking. I'm begging. Under one and a half in the first yeah. period. I don't think I'm also been surprised that, in this period at yeah. all. I'm also surprised there hasn't been as many fights in this series, which I like. There's like scraps in front of the net, but I was kind of expecting someone, not Oscar, something. Because I thought, I thought, I honestly thought with how tough he was getting, he was going to fight somebody. Like, no, 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 no. Yeah, no, and I thought TK was going to go Do in. Do not do like, that in your first, first game. Third game. Uh, but anyone that's not Oscar Lindblom, because I'm not trying to have this dude fight in his second game back. Uh, yeah. If, uh, you fight, better step in for that. Step, yeah, set the momentum. And Do stuff. something like Furlan did, coming back from concussion and has a fight his first game. Like, yeah, no, what no, the heck was that? that? No, we He's don't want done. To do that. He's done now. Yeah. Like, <laughs> the one thing that you can do in hockey that you for sure are going to get hit in the head with, <laughs> you go and yeah, do exactly. it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Like that pretty much proves you weren't ready to come back from concussion already. If you're thinking that unclearly already. Yeah, right. <laughs> that was go crazy. have a fight your first game back. Yeah, okay. 
And and speaking of fights on your first game back, look, I think we can wrap it up by saying that we we both all we all feel that the Flyers are going to win. We all in our hearts feel that that's what's going on. And we, the reason why we feel that in our hearts is because of Carter Hart. We think this kid has yeah. stepped up and he's going to continue to step up. And our team is finally starting to play around him. And I look for that match to continue to be lit and that fire to continue to burn in their bellies. And that's what I'm looking for, forward for tonight. So any final thoughts you got there on this one, uh, Professor? No, I mean, I think, like we said, Hart's going to be the key. Uh, Reamer continuing to play like he's playing. Scotty's confidence <laughs> is back. And... Uh, Hayes has played adequate the entire time, but now looks like he's playing like how we've seen Kevin Hayes swinging play. him back. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I think we have a good chance in today's game, and then you just gotta sleep the entire time as you fly to Edmonton and just don't do anything for about fourteen to fifteen hours straight, and then get back to hockey activity. Yeah, right, a yeah. little bit rested up. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, right. For sure, for sure, for sure, Professor. Thanks for all your great insight, man. How can we follow you? Well, if you go on steelflyers.com, you can get all of our contacts on there. That's for me and Steve. And uh, also, if you go on Twitter, true underscore Philly sport is our podcast and sports fanatic news is the YouTube page uh, for that as well. Awesome. All right, man. Perlo, give me some wisdom, man. Final thoughts. What do you think Uh, about final thoughts for tonight? Like I said, logically speaking, I don't care. I have not been able to be put in this position too often. As a <laughs> you soda. homer, you. I, said, I really, I mean, if I was looking from the outside in, I don't know. what. I can't even think of what I would think. I am so yeah. engrossed in the fact that Philadelphia can go to the Western Finals. I really don't care about logic. I don't care about stats anymore. I don't care about yeah. anything. All yeah. I care about is just being able to root for my team and love them and, 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 you know, and and want them to do everything they can to get there because it's going to be absolutely amazing. And, yes, absolutely. Uh, Your next question is how can you find me? It's definitely www.steelflyers.com. And uh, keep going to that site, and we're going to be giving you a whole lot of information in the next little while. I'll tell you, my friends, it is going to blow Thank you too. away. It's going yeah, yeah. to be amazing. Can't wait. Just for like it. the Chicago so, win. Yeah. 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 It's going to be so much fun. I'm having fun being part of it. We're yeah, so excited, yeah, and we can't wait for it to happen. Just about as excited as for this game tonight. And uh, thanks for all of you for watching us all the way. Subscribe, hit the bell, all that yeah, kind of please. stuff like that. And uh, Comments yeah. and everything. All these great new subscribers we got coming in and views. I know. Keep them coming. It's, Keep it's tell amazing. your friends. Tell your Love friends. It. Look. Thank you guys very much. It's been an absolute joy and an absolute pleasure and an absolute blessing having you guys on. Um, The professor, great knowledge. Pearls of wisdom always dropping it on us for us. Look, come to steelflyers.com to get all of your steel flyers need. You'll be able to find uh, the great professor there. You'll be able to find pearls of wisdom there too and all kinds of great videos and all of your great needs all in a one-stop shop. Lots of great uh, announcements coming up. A merger and a partnership coming up soon, real too. So uh, stay tuned. You can also follow me on uh, Twitter at SteelFlyers52. Thanks a lot for joining us, and go Flyers!